Hey guys, I'm Nathan from Harrison Audio, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the monitor bus instead of your master fader, and also show some cool features that you can use in your next session. So if you haven't done so already, you wanna turn on your monitor bus by going to session, then monitor section, and check the box for use monitor section. And you can also see we have keyboard shortcuts for a mute, dim, and mono. And now that we have those engaged, a monitor button is over here on top of the master bus and you can just push that button and now we see our monitor bus. So everyone is used to using solo in place, which is the main option that you get with any doll, but mix bus actually allows you to have pre fader and after fader monitoring. So that way you don't interrupt your main mix and you want to solo something without messing up what's coming out of your main monitors. And when I play this track, this is what we get. Okay, great. So with solo in place engaged, I can go through and solo any track or individual bus, and it's gonna naturally mute everything else. If I choose pre-fader level, it's actually gonna give me full volume of the track regardless of where the fader is on the individual channel or bus. And it will be sent directly to the monitor bus without affecting the volume that's coming out of the master bus. So here it is with pre-fader level. <laughs> Okay, notice how it was so much louder than normal. That's because the fader is all the way down here. That's just how I have it mixed currently. But with pre-fader level, you're getting the full volume coming in from the input. So now with after fader level, it's going to actually play back at the volume I have the current fader position at. <laughs> And after fair level is gonna give me the panning position versus the pre fair level, which made everything mono and at full volume. Another way to solo things without having to go in and solo one track and then turn it off and then solo another track is to use exclusive solo. And what this button does is essentially just the toggle of the solo button from track to track. <laughs> And if you want to access that feature without having to go into the monitor bus every time, there is a shortcut for that. And if you hover your mouse over the solo button, you can see that there is a command control click for exclusive solo or it's control alt click for PC users. So I'm going to turn off exclusive solo and just use my keyboard shortcut for a quick example. <laughs> So that's just a really quick way to isolate something without having to permanently solo one track and then go and solo another track. Now, following on the heels of the solo option, we have solo boost and solo in place cut. And this is a way to actually solo a track and make it a little bit louder than it currently is. And we do have some different DB options down here as far as zero DB, three, six, or 10. So, 10 is gonna be a little loud for this example, but I'm just gonna make it three dB louder than it currently is in the mix. So now for solo in place cut, this is actually a way to solo something but still hear it in the context of the full mix. So essentially the rest of the mix is going to be lowered or ducked while keeping your solo track up front and focused. So I'm gonna go ahead and play these drums. Mm -hmm. 
Now check out what happens when I start raising this volume. So I can still hear everything else in the background, but I'm predominantly hearing the drums. And that's just really cool because we hear all the time that you should never EQ or compress something in solo mode because you're not really hearing it in context. Well, this is a great way to still solo something while also hearing the rest of the instruments in the mix. The solo of the mute button basically says that anything that is muted will now be soloed regardless of it's muted or not. So if I go in here and mute the bass and guitar, this is what we have. So this is good for when you want to mute a track in a session, but maybe keep it around just as a reference and then go and solo that track whenever you need to call it up. The next button is called processors. And this is an area where you can add plugins, maybe for a room correction or just an alternate EQ for your monitors. So you can listen without actually affecting your main mix. All you do is just simply right click like you're adding a plugin. And I like to use the console EQ and set up as my NS10 filter. So that way I'm cutting out some low end, cutting out some high end and kind of listening as if I was listening through NS10s. <laughs> Now moving on below this, we can actually mute, dim, solo, or invert just the left side or the right side of our stereo field. And that might be useful when you're wanting to check certain things. Maybe you hear an issue only on the right side of your mix. So you wanna mute the left side, or we can dim the left side, or solo the right side, or even invert one side of your stereo field. Now getting to the mono, dim, and mute buttons. Uh, these are very, very popular options on physical hardware monitor units. And even some interfaces come with mono, dim, and mute options on their master section. So that way you can control the volume coming out of your monitors and also mono them momentarily, dim them versus at the volume you listen to the majority of the time. And you can just flat out mute your monitors if you need to. So looking back at the main menu, we can see we have under the session and then monitor section, we have keyboard shortcuts for mute, which is command M or control M on a PC, dim, which is command shift M or control shift M. And then we have mono, which is command control M or control alt M on a PC. So the more you work with these shortcuts, the faster you're gonna commit them to memory. And I just really urge you to just dive in and just start using them and see how you like it. So for instance, to show the monitor bus shortcut is shift M. So just simply show and hide the monitor bus on the right side of the screen. And control M toggles back and forth between your edit and your mix windows. But command M is how you mute the monitor bus. So you can be playing something. And we can mute it. And now we have nothing. We can use command control M to mono. And then sometimes it's really good to have things in mono and at a very low volume. So when you're checking your mix, you can see what things stick out and figure out where you need to go back and maybe re EQ something or compress something a little bit more or just change your fader balance. So the volume control here for the dim, we have presets all the way from zero dB all the way down to negative 20. And now I can just use my shortcut, shift command M, and I can dim my mix really fast. Let's go ahead and turn on the mono.
So the reason why you want to use your monitor bus to change the level of your monitors versus your master fader is if when you use the master fader, you're actually changing the level that's going to be exported when you're done with your mix. It also changes what's going into any plugins that you have after your fader. So for example, if I move my fader before my compressor and I really squash my compressor, just over exaggerate it for this example. This is what we get. Got tons of compression going on. But now when I bring down my master fader, this is what we get. You can see I get less compression and I have lowered the level on my K14 meter, which lets me know how loud my mix actually is. So now I want to bring it back up. All right, so that's all well and good, but that's not the proper way to actually use your master fader, unless you were to use some automation at the very tail end of your mix to bring the volume down, which is perfectly fine. But the majority of the time you want your master fader to stay exactly where it is at zero. And if you need to bring down your level for any reason, because maybe you're hitting the K14 meter too hard, you can always use your trim knob for that. Or you can also bring it up if your levels are too low. But that really just affects how loud the final mix is going to be, but not necessarily how loud you're hearing it coming out of the monitors. So that's why we have this monitor knob right here. We can adjust it. So if you don't have a master knob on your interface that you can adjust things, this is a great way to do that. Then you also have presets you can choose from as well. So the final thing we can look at is the actual output of our master bus versus the monitor bus. Right now I have my master bus set to monitor in, which means the output of my master bus is going to the input of my monitor bus. But what if we wanna have two separate outputs so that way we have one volume going out to our main speakers. Maybe you're doing this for a house of worship or just a live venue. So for that, I can go to the bottom of my master bus, click on output, and now choose any other output that I have. So for this instance, I can use monitor left and right. And then I can still set my output to virtual one and two because I'm using an Apollo twin in this example. But that's also how I'm capturing all my audio for this video. So I may not want to change that just yet. So just know that anytime you want to separate the volume from your master bus and your monitor bus, you can always go and adjust that down here on your main output option. Or you can also go into your audio connection manager. So we have our monitor output going to virtual one and two, and we have our master output going to monitor left and right. And these are just a few of the ways that I found that I can use the monitor bus. Keep exploring these options and see how you can incorporate these into your next session. And until next time, I'm Nathan from Harrison Audio. Happy mixing.